Well, it's great to, to visit our New Life churches as the leader of New Life. Anita and I get to get around and see. I don't know whether you're aware of this, but you're part of a movement of churches, 83 churches across the country, 10,000 people meeting on a Sunday, every Sunday, right across this nation from different African churches, Filipino churches, Korean uh, uh, churches, and us white fella churches and all other things. But God is doing some significant things. And every year we gather for a conference in different places and uh, call it alive. And again, I know some of you have been uh, to it, but I just want to show a quick video that just tells you a little bit about our conference coming up. And I would love to have you join us if you uh, uh, could. I know there's about 21 of you already coming, but let's just play that video. It just tells you a little bit about the conference. Can you just start moving? Can you get up and start running? Now, I'm not just talking about moving for moving sake. What does he say? I'm off running towards Jesus. As Christians, we are never supposed to stop. The Bible says his kingdom is always advancing. Someone will say to you, you need to do this and you, God needs to use you. And you're like, you don't know who I am. But who we are is not different to any of the people God used in the Bible. Because grass up a talk leads to a grass up a wall. Just stop thinking small and understand you're part of something big. There's us. This is on my daughter's wedding, uh, wedding day, Grace, and uh, that's her husband, Carl. He's a Rarotongan Scottish guy. It's a kind of a weird mix, but it works. And so they got married in December, and she's our youth pastor, and and uh, they're basically again going to be leading uh, youth for New Life in New Zealand. I think some of you heard her a few weeks ago at nights of uh, nights of fire. She's got the fire like her, like a daddy and mummy, uh, and her, and then my other daughter, Gia, who's next to her, and her husband Jeremy and then my son on the other side there who gets all his good looks from me as you can you can yeah, some of you, actually, I don't know who that lady was there was a lady as I came in she's like oh you're so young looking I was like yeah I like you too it's just great it's, a, it's, it's fine I said it's a surgery it cost me a fortune but it gets me all uh, uh, sorted out but but Anita and I I've got my beautiful wife come on stand up and just give a twirl so I met, uh, I met my wife in the beautiful, she is from India, praise God, hallelujah. So I met her over there, we, were, we went to this Bible college, you know. And she saw me and she was like, wow, 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 look at him. And I went, yes, look at me. And uh, we came and we got married and we had nice babies and everything's worked out very, uh, uh, very good. So we've, uh, that's our family. And I used to wonder why do pastors show their photos um, all the time of their family and, you know, of their grandkids. And then, then we had a grandkid and now I know why pastors show it. Go to the next photo. That's our grandkid. That's our. We just became grandparents. Everybody go, oh, so cute. No, you didn't, weren't good enough. No, oh, so cutie. Yeah, yeah. So that's our grandkid, Anna. She was born, and I never knew I could love again like that. When your first children are born, you feel this love like you've never uh, 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 felt before. And, uh, you know, as they get older, that of course you get used to that. But that same love, that same love, when she was born, I was like, oh my goodness, I'm feeling that same heart thing in my, oh, I'm just getting little jitters in my heart again. I never knew I could love like that again. So that's our uh, granddaughter, and we're so pleased. And, and, and yes, I probably am a very young looking grandfather. <laughs> amen, amen. That's a good place to say a, amen, amen. Well, you know, I, I love airports. I love airports. I love airports because airports are places, we've been traveling a little bit the last few days. Airports are places where you can watch people, where you can see people. And uh, uh, see how people are doing. I, I, I like the exoticness of airports, you know. Uh, I, I wondering where people are going. You know, you see them with their bags, walking. And I, and I sit there and I wonder, where are they going? What exotic location? Could it be Manila? Could it be somewhere else? I don't know. Where is it that those people are going? 
And, and I'm just a bit of a, call it weird, but I'm a bit of a people, uh, uh, people watcher. And the other thing is you never know who you might meet in the airports. And I know some of you were at the uh, um, regional day and I shared this story, but I want to share it again uh, uh, today because we were in the airport just a few months ago and we were sitting in the lounge and uh, waiting for our flight to come. And suddenly these big guys came in, these really uh, uh, tall guys, and they're like, Got little earpieces in and little fancy earpieces, and they're like, suck to six, suck to six. <laughs> clear, clear, clear. And they were walking around, other guys came in, and I was like, man, somebody important must be coming. I thought, I'm already there, so I don't know who else is coming, but it's like, <laughs> clear, 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 clear. Oh, the eagle has landed. Over. And so after a few minutes, these guys walking around suddenly. The Prime Minister of our nation comes in, and he sits, yeah, that's what I said, and he comes in and he sat in a seat. It was just about as far away as you guys are now. And I said to my wife, I said, dear, look, it's the Prime Minister. Look, 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 Prime Minister, John English. John English is over there, no, John English. She's like, yeah, yeah, it's him, it's him, it's him. And so I'm sitting there, and then suddenly our flight's called, Flight 419 to Nelson, now boarding at gate 3. Now I knew I only had a couple of minutes. I said, I'm going to meet the Prime Minister. I've been talking to our church about overcoming fear and not being afraid to do things. And so I thought, well, this is my time. This is my time. This is my place. This is my moment to get in his face. And so I'm going I'm to meet the Prime Minister. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And so I got up. I, I, I mean, I've never met uh, John English before. And so I, 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 as I, was get, I get up and I walk over and I said, Hello, Mr. Prime Minister. He immediately got up. And of course, all the security guys are like, Quiet, nutcase, nutcase, nutcase. <laughs> and then I thought, I thought it was all right. So the Prime Minister got up and we started talking. And then the Prime Minister was like, Could I take a photo with you? I'm like, No, come on, I don't do photos. <laughs> Actually, I was waiting for Anita to pull out her camera and... But we're, but we're there, and I said, like, Prime Minister, we talked. We ended up talking for about five minutes, just chatting about the highway and stuff that they've put through our town and just talking uh, about that type of thing. And then the flight, I had to go, ding, ding, with passengers, white, and something. So we've got to go. So we left the uh, Prime Minister there. And as I'm walking towards the plane, I suddenly go, oh, oh my goodness, his name is not John English. His name is Bill English. And then I kept walking and I went, Johnny English is Mr. Bean in the movie. Johnny, it could have gone so wrong. I could have insulted the Prime Minister of our country. But you never know who you're going to meet in airports. But one of the things I've noticed when people travel from place to place or or go from town to town, one of the things you'll always notice, especially in airports, is you will always see people with baggage. Everybody say baggage. You'll always see people with baggage. Some people have little baggage. They just have some hand baggage. It's not too heavy. It's not too light. It's just their hand, hand baggage. Others, they have a case, then a trolley, and they're pulling, pulling it along. Then you see those people with a lot of baggage. A lot of baggage. They have trolleys. Trolley. Have you ever been one of those people? I mean, yeah. We're going back home. Come on, push the trolley. They have trolleys and trolleys and trolleys of baggage. They have a lot of baggage. It's kind of like life, isn't it? You sometimes see people. Do you know people, maybe? People who have got maybe a little bit of baggage, or maybe you know some people who have a lot of baggage They're in their lives. It's sort of like life, isn't it? You have people in life who some are carrying a little bit of baggage and then you have those other people and they're carrying a lot of baggage. Do you know people who carry baggage? Come on, shit, let me show your hands. Do you know people who carry baggage? Are you sitting next to them? No, don't, don't reply to that. But people out there carry carry baggage. I love it. When I can go to an airport and I don't have to carry any baggage. 
I love it when I can get on the plane and I can get on and get on real quick and and get a, arrive at the other end and then just get off and then just go on and do my thing. I don't have to wait for the baggage. I don't have to do it. I can just get on and do my thing. That's like what I call living light. Living light. You know, sometimes I have gone on the plane. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit ashamed to admit this. But I've gone onto the plane and my hand baggage, you know your hand baggage, it's only allowed to be 7 kgs. And, and I've gone on, I've got to admit it, don't look at me like that, you've done it too. Come on, I'm telling you, come on, we'll have a confession time. I know you've done it. We've all got issues. Tell you, turn to your neighbor and say, you've got issues too, come on. And I was carrying this, see, here, here's the thing. We lived in India for, for many, many, many years. So 11 years we lived in India. And all of our children were born in India. We were missionaries in India. So when we were there, we basically would only come back to New Zealand every three years. I had to check how many fingers I had up there just to make sure. Uh, we would come back every three years. And we'd stay for a few months in the church that we are part of, that we now are the senior pastors of. And we would stay there, just get rest and refreshed. But when it came time to go back to India, we knew that we weren't coming back for three years. And so we loaded up every suitcase we could. We packed it up. We packed it up to the max. In fact, we were one of those awkward families. We were one of those awkward families. We had trolleys, okay? And they weren't packed here. And Nita's trolley especially, because she likes to shop. Her trolley was up to like here. And so we're going through the airport, not just her, that's her trolley, my trolley's up to here, and we're pushing. Now we carry everything. We carry, because we, 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 you always need a microwave, and so we'd carry a big microwave, we carry a, a big computer, and this is the days before laptops, this is with the, the big ones, the big screens, you know, the way we'd put all of that, because we didn't know when we're going to come, come back, and so we'd have all of these trolleys. Not only that, our three kids, they each had a trolley. And they'd be pushing it like, Dad, we can hardly move. Now keep moving, keep moving. They were pushing all the baggage. In fact, I remember one trip, we had so much luggage, we had to put it into our hand baggage. Yeah, I did this. This is true. And I had one piece of hand baggage. It was 30 kgs. Oh, Jesus, I know. It was 30 kgs, and it was so heavy, I had to wear a red t-shirt because it was cutting into my skin here and blood, you know, it was just, it was heavy. But you know, when you do that, and I know you've probably done it too, when you do that, you've got to pretend that it looks light. Come on, you've done it too, I know you have, I know you have. I've got so many gifts for mum back home, for the family. And so I had all my concordances and all my Bibles. and all, So this was a spiritual thing I was doing. I mean, it was, so I'm, I'm looking there and I'm walking on the plane. This is nearly killing me. I'll get onto the plane. It's, it's cutting into my shoulder. I get on and the air hostess is on there. Hello. Welcome aboard. Could I help you with that, sir? And I'm like, no, no. It's, it's fine because I know if she takes that bag... She's going to go, boom, bang. It's going to go through the floor, take her through the floor, and they're going to end up on the tarmac, and that's going to delay the flight. So I can't do it. It was so heavy. It was just so heavy. So I had to pretend that it was light. Don't we do life like that sometimes? Or oh, I'm getting ready to preach right now. Don't we do life like that? We carry sometimes heavy burdens, heavy things that weigh us down and, 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 and sometimes they cut us and sometimes they, they hurt us and sometimes they bring pain to our lives and, and yet we pretend they're light. Oh man, they're killing us, it's hurting us, it's doing it. And we've got this baggage and it's weighing us down but I'm going to pretend or oh, I'm preaching now. Look, I'm preaching better than you're responding. Come on, somebody. I'm a, I, I gotta have, you gotta, you gotta feel me now. This is my first time. I'm pretty nervous. It's lonely up here. My God. Why don't we carry baggage and pretend it's light? Pretend it's, but yet it's cutting 
us, it's hurting us. We can do life like that. In fact, we learn to do life like that. We can even arrive at church like that. You know, you, 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 I, don't, I don't know how you arrived at church. I don't know what you're, you're carrying today. I don't know what baggage you've, you've got today. But we, we, we learn how to, how to talk to the air hostess. We learn how to, how to say uh, the words. I mean, uh, you know, sometimes my, uh, my wife and I, I mean, we might have had a, a fight or something maybe 10 years ago or something. We haven't had any. We don't have many fights, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> By the way, we've been married 30 years. Can you come on this? 30 years. We don't have many fights, you know. Sometimes, you know, okay, sometimes I muck things up. Like I, I choose, what should I go? Go out on a date with my wife or watch the All Blacks? Date All Blacks. One time I chose the All Blacks. And you know what? My wife was so good. She didn't say a thing. For three weeks, she didn't say a thing. <laughs> come on, some of you men have been there right now. You know what I'm talking about. I actually said that joke and someone asked her, really, how did you do that for three weeks? It was a joke. I've forgotten what I was talking about now, but the, 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 the thing was we, we, we can carry this baggage. We can come into church carrying it. We learn how to do it. My husband and wife, you know, they can be having a fight in the car going, driving the car, Come into church, see the ushers at the door, and you're like, praise God, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. How's everything? Oh, marvelous, marvelous, wonderful. But wouldn't it be better to really live light? What baggage are you carrying? I should have, that's what my message is about. You got any baggage? What baggage are... You're carrying what? What baggage uh, is weighing you down, cutting your heart? What baggage is affecting your life? Because here's what I've learned: I've learned a couple of things over the years in my traveling about baggage. From my experience, the first thing I've learned is one: it's heavy. You carry a lot of baggage, it's, it's heavy. And when it's heavy, it can slow you down. If you're here today and you're carrying a lot of baggage in your life, let me tell you this, it will slow you down. You won't be able to move as fast. This morning when we came out of the hotel, we had to uh, get to this other a place. I'm used to driving 30 seconds to our church back home. But I got in the car and realized, man, we're 22 kilometers away from the, from the church. But you should have seen us with our cases. We're trying to open the elevator and get him in. Come on, dear. Come on, move it, move it. I mean, we nearly had a fight coming now. Go, right, come on. Because carrying a lot of baggage slows you down. Why? Because it's, cause, cause it's heavy. And not only that, when, when you've got a lot of ba- baggage, it, it, it can hurt you. When I've traveled overseas and we've taken teams and all types of things and we've gone, gone overseas, the amount of times I've hurt my back literally for months or damaged my wrist trying to lift heavy, uh, heavy bags, uh, um, it, it's no good. It hurts you when you carry a lot of baggage. Not only will it slow you down, but it can hurt you. And here's the thing. Hurt people hurt people. Hurt people hurt people. If we don't deal with our baggage, if we don't sort out and, 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 get, and, and deal with our baggage, we can hurt not just ourselves, but we can hurt other people. The second thing I've learned about baggage is if you carry too much baggage, if you carry too much baggage, other people have to end up helping you with it. Other people have to help you with it. Like us traveling to India that time, as I said, our trolleys were, 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 were massive and, 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 and huge and Anita would have her trolley and I would have 
my trolley, and then coming behind us was our kids coming behind us. They, they, they were pushing all of our baggage. And I want to tell you, friend, if you don't let go of your baggage, it can affect your kids. Come on, somebody. Now I'm preaching good. Our baggage, our kids can end up carrying our baggage. If we don't deal with our baggage, if we don't sort out our baggage, our kids can end up. Carrying our baggage. Good preaching. Thank you very much. It's true. Of course, here's the thing you've got to remember. If you carry too much baggage these days, they won't let you fly. They won't let you fly. See, I'm believing that God wants you to fly. I'm believing that God has a great plan for your life. I'm believing that God has a destiny. I, 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 come on, somebody, say amen. I, I'm believing that God has a tremendous plan to advance you and to move you into all He has for you. I'm believing that God wants you to fly, but you carry too much baggage, they won't let you fly. Too much baggage, you can't fly. The airline will tell you, they will say, Sir... Madam, I'll say you have excess baggage. You have excess baggage. And we know, of course, if you don't get rid, everybody say get rid. Get rid. Oh, God, say it like you mean it now. Get rid. get rid. If you don't get rid of that excess baggage, what do we know? We know it's going to cost you. If you don't get rid of that excess baggage, you know you're going to have to pay. There are hefty penalties for the excess baggage. I want to ask you today, Life Expressions Church, I want to ask you today, are you carrying any excess baggage? It's all gone quiet in this church. Are you carrying any excess baggage today that you need to get rid of? You see, my Bible teaches us that we have immigrated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Oh, I'll say that again. My Bible teaches me that we have immigrated, you and I, tap your neighbor and say, he's talking about you. It's taught me that we have immigrated from the kingdom of darkness and we have moved into the kingdom of light. We're part of a different kingdom, a different place. We have immigrated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. But some of us, some of us are carrying some souvenirs from the old life. You know the story of the people of Israel. They were in bondage for 400 years. How many know that's a long time? They were, they, they were slaves for 400 years. And we know eventually they were released and able to get out and uh, move into the wilderness and then into the promised land. But if you know the story, they didn't really have much problem getting out of Egypt the main problem was getting Egypt out of them. I'll say it again. They didn't have much problem getting out of Egypt, but the main problem was getting the Egypt out of them. Baggage. Everybody say baggage. You know, when you arrive in New Zealand, you face customs and they will ask you anything to declare anything to declare any hazardous goods any any banned souvenirs any ivory or and, and why do they ask you those questions why do they say why do they ask you those questions the reason they ask you those questions because we've all seen the programs is because some naughty people try to sneak stuff in they try to say, oh, no, oh, it's just a little thing. It's just, oh, it's no big deal. I mean, it's just a piece of fruit. I'm just taking a little piece of fruit. I mean, 
How can fruit, how can having a bite of a piece of fruit cause any problem? Well, read Genesis. Come on, somebody. It's just a little thing. Nobody will know. I'll just sneak it in. Nobody will know. We try to bring into the kingdom of light stuff from our past, stuff from our old life, baggage from our old life. And I believe God's saying today, it's time to get rid of our baggage. Come on, somebody. It's time for us to deal with our baggage. Anything to declare? Anything to declare here today? We think sometimes, wow, nobody knows. Nobody sees. It's just a small thing. It's no, it's no big deal. Sometimes the customs officer will ask you, can you open your baggage? I, I want to see what's inside. If God was to open your baggage today, what would he see? Good preaching, Adam. Thank you. If he was to open your baggage today, what would he see? What would he find? I mean, God already knows. There's no place that where God can go, Oh, shoot, I hadn't seen that before. He already knows. But, but what are we trying to sneak through? What are we, what are we trying to get, get through? They'll sometimes ask you, Open your baggage. We want to have a look inside. If you arrive at Auckland Airport, as I'm sure many of you have, you'll see as you're approaching the customs thing, they have these big bins called amnesty bins. And they're amnesty bins where you can take stuff and you know, man, I shouldn't bring it in. It's your last moment where you can throw it away and, and, and push it in and take that out and, 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 and get rid of that which you shouldn't be carrying. I want to declare this altar here today an amnesty altar. Before this service is over, I want to have a time where this becomes our amnesty altar, where we can get rid of the stuff that we, come on, that we can get rid of the stuff we've been carrying for far too long. Get rid of the stuff that's been weighing us down. Anything to declare? The amnesty bids are where you get rid. Everybody say get rid. They're the place where you get rid of stuff. As you fly into New Zealand, they give you a declaration form. They say this, anything to declare, they give you a piece of paper. And on that piece of paper, all these tick boxes. Do you have this? Do you have that? Do you have that? Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And there's a list of things put out there for, for, for you to tick. Yes, I have this. No, I don't have this. Anything to declare. It's a list. Do you know there are lists of stuff in Scripture? Do you know in the Bible there are lists of things to watch out for? The Bible also has similar lists. And that's one of the things when you're doing Bible study They'll teach you, watch out for lists in the Bible, where things are listed one after the other. And in Scripture we find lists. One of them is in Ephesians 4, verse 31. And it says this, get rid. Everybody say, get rid. Come on, say it like you believe it now. Get rid. It says, get rid of all, and all in the Greek means all. Get rid of all bitterness. Rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. In Colossians chapter 3, verses 7 through 9, we find another list. And, and Paul, as he's going through this, even repeats some of the same things. And again, one of the things when you're studying the Bible is look for things that repeat when things are said over and over again. That adds emphasis 
to them. In Colossians 3 verse 7 through 9 we find another list and it says this. It says, you used to walk in these ways. In the life you once lived. But now, everybody say but now. But now, he's saying, that's how you used to live. You used to walk like that. You used to live like that. But now, I'm calling you to a higher standard. But now, I'm calling you to a different way to live. But now, I have a new way I want you to live. He says, you used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. But now, you must get rid. Everybody say, get rid. You must rid yourselves of all such things as these. And he repeats again, anger, rage. No, you don't have to repeat it after me, but good on you. But he begins to go through the list again, anger, rage. Have you ever had rage? You ever had rage? You ever got road rage? Well, you've got mad. I remember one time in India, a few years ago now, but I remember I was driving down, and I guess the traffic in India is sort of like the traffic in the Philippines as well. I guess it's a little bit crazy. And I was driving down this road called MG Road. It was the main sort of thoroughfare of the, of the town. City of 9 million people, very, very busy. I'm driving down MG Road with the family. And what happens is, as I'm driving down, suddenly this little van pulls out in front of me and blocks off the whole road. Like, I couldn't move. The van had tinted windows, so I couldn't see who was there. Pulled off, blocked the whole road. Now, I don't know what happens in Auckland when you do that, but in India when you do that, in about two minutes, you've got 3,000 vehicles behind you. Then people are getting mad. Hey, what is this fellow doing? Get out of the way. What is he doing? eh? (laughs) Crazy foreigner. What is he doing? Silly fellow sitting there like that doing that. You know, so I'm panicking. I mean, I'm getting thing, and so I'm looking at this car going, what are you doing? Don't look at me like that. I know you've done the same thing. Come on, sometimes. He was shooting at these blocking the whole road. And I'm like, what is he doing? I'm like, dear, what is it? She's saying, calm down, calm down. I mean, I'm a man of the cloth. I'm a man. I should be much more calm. But I, I was getting raged. I was getting, I was getting mad. What is this guy doing? All these people behind me. And then suddenly I see after about, I don't know, it felt like forever, didn't it? It felt like forever this guy's sitting there. Suddenly I see his window coming down and I thought, oh, okay. All right. It's time to lay hands on some people. Come on, sir. I mean, I'm, I'm getting really, really upset. You know, rage is, rage is getting me. And so I'm just about, I think he's going to abuse me. Because in India, how the traffic works is no one admits whose fault it is. Everyone just abuses everyone. And whoever abuses the loudest, that's so that you get through, you know. I don't know how that works, but that, that's how it works in India. So I'm like, this fellow's getting ready to say something. I'm going to say something back. And so as I get down these wounds, I see the window running around, and then I look at the guy, and I see it's a guy from church. <laughs> and he's like, praise the Lord, brother. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. So good to see you. And I was like, oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. He said, I was in the car, you know. I pulled out in front of the road, and then I saw you. I saw you there. You know, in India, actually, there's a little side story. In India, I talk like this. You might not think, but I do. (laughs) But they say, oh, pastor, we can understand you so clearly. (laughs) Such beautiful English you've got. Absolutely. I said, yeah, beautiful English. Other foreigners, we can't understand anything they're talking about. (laughs) But anyway, he's wondering, he said, I was there in the car, I saw you, I was waving like crazy inside the car, but then I realized after one minute, oh, my windows are tinted, I can't see anything you can't see. I was like, thank you, Jesus, I didn't say or do something I shouldn't have done. Rage! Twice he says, get rid of it. Anger. Rage. Bitterness. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must get rid. Everybody say, get rid. Rid. Oh, come on. Get rid. 
See, you live with what you tolerate. Oh, yeah, get rid. Yeah, I really want to get rid of that. <laughs> no, you don't. You've got to get to that place where I'll get rid. We've got to get mad at the devil. We've got to get mad at the things he's, he's robbing our lives. He came to rob, kill, and uh, destroy. I figure, get rid. <laughs> oh, yeah, I really want to get rid of that. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> Not. Come on, everybody say, get rid. Get rid. Tap your neighbor and say, you've got to get rid of some stuff. Come on. says, get rid yourselves of all such things as these anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language. Filthy language. Bad words. Filthy language. It says, get rid of those type of things. I don't know what it's like in your churches. Probably you guys are fine. But in our churches, are putting out some bad language. I remember we were doing stuff for our volunteers. One time we thought, what can we do for our volunteers? End of year thing. We like to do a gift for them. So we said, we're going to make a nice, cool little gift. So have some flowers and some chocolates and some real cool thing. And so we all came together, our staff, and we started making all of these gifts. And we thought, well, then we'll go and drop them at each person's door. The problem was, it took us way longer to make the gifts than what we were thinking about. So by the time we started delivering them, they were la- it was late at night. It was completely dark. And so we were going to people's houses really late at night, putting them there and going, and then running uh, running away. And so one of our volunteers, they get out, they're going to bless this person who's part of our, part of our church, and they went and they put it they put it there, and they placed it all there, and then they went, knock, 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 on the door. It was about 11 o'clock at night, and all they heard back, hey, who's the... I can't even say it here. So, I mean, I just, they, 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 some bad words were coming firing back from this very devoted member of our church. <laughs> he thought he was being robbed or something like that. You can imagine his shock when he opened the door a little bit later to see a nice gift and all that there. And you should have seen him come into church the next day. <laughs> He said, I'm so sorry, Pastor. I said, don't worry. I said, this story is good sermon fodder. I'll be telling the story around the world wherever, wherever I go. He says, get rid of filthy language. How's your language? Tap your neighbor and say, mind your language. Some of you are pointing at people. You know stuff. You know stuff. Anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self and its practices. First Peter 2 verse 1, the list is repeated. It says, get rid. Everybody say, get rid. Hey. Rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, all hypocrisy, envy, envy and slander. Everybody say, slander. Slander, it's, it's now said three times. Slander is said three times in all this. That means it must be important. What's slander? That, that's saying things about people that isn't true. Hey, psst. Hey, come here. I just want to tell you something. I've heard. You know that so-and-so. You know so-and-so. What? 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 I'm just telling you. So you can pray about it, you know. That's what I'm telling you. You know people like that? Have you been that person? No, I mean, it's just, it's just a, I, just, I just want you to, I, I'm just telling you, so it's a slander. Get rid of it. Don't do it. Hey, I just want to tell you about the pastors. Do you know? This is and that. No, tell me. I want to know. <laughs> Listen, I tell you, when people, if people do that to you, uh, do that about others to you, they'll do it about you to others. Come on, I want to tell you. Get rid. Everybody say, get rid. rid. (laughs) 
and goes on in James 1 verse 21 verse 22. It says, therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word of God planted in you, which can save you. And then it says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anything to declare? You got anything to declare? Could the keyboard player come up, please, and just play something quietly in the background? I want to turn this, the front of this church, into an amnesty altar. Because for some of you, you've been carrying baggage for far too long. Oh yes, you've been trying to live light. You've been trying to pretend like it isn't affecting you. It's, it's, it's cutting you. Maybe not your shoulder, but it's cutting your heart. You're carrying stuff. You're carrying stuff that you know you shouldn't be carrying. You've got some excess baggage. And why not use this moments? These moments don't always come. They come every now and then. Why not use these moments? Make this the place where, like the amnesty bin, where you can drop that baggage in and it's gone away. See, here's the thing, my friend. Jesus has paid the price for your excess baggage. He's paid the price. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are heavy laden. Come to me, who, all of you who are carrying baggage that you don't need to carry. Come, uh, come to me. Why carry it? I, I, I've paid the price for you so that you can carry it no more. I've paid the price so that, so that you can live light. So you no longer need to carry that stuff anymore. There'll be people here thinking, oh no, man. I'm the only one who's carrying that baggage. But I want to tell you, the Bible talks about there is no temptation that has taken us but that which is common to man. There's no baggage that's out there. You might think, well, I'm the only one who's got this bag. I'm the only one who's carrying this baggage. I want to tell you, we, we all have the same struggles. We all have the same things. The beautiful thing about the amnesty buckets, the amnesty bin is no one asks you the question, God already knows what the baggage is. No one asks you the question. It's up to you to respond and to put stuff in that bin. I don't know what your baggage is today. But I know there will be people in here who have been carrying it for an awful long time. And maybe you've got to a point where it's robbing you of your joy. It's robbing you of your, the, 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 the faith life you have because it's heavy. Because it slows you down. Because it's stopping you from flying. God wants you to take off. God wants you, wants you to enter into. He's got new places for you to go. But this just keeps slowing me down. Why walk out of here today carrying that when you can lay it down here when Jesus has paid the price for you? Why carry it anymore? Could this be your moment? Oh yeah, we can act like, man, we're, 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 yeah, we're just, we're, yeah, it's not heavy, but it's weighing you down. You know. Why do you want to pretend? Don't worry about the people behind you. Don't worry about the people on your left. Don't worry about what this one will say. Don't worry about what that one will say. It's time for you to get free. Jesus said, He who the Son sets free is free indeed. There can be freedom in this altar today. There can be liberty in this altar today. You can walk out of this place different than how you came in. If only you would lay your baggage at his feet. Anything to declare? Anything to declare? Anything that you know, God, I'm tired of carrying this. 
It's weighing me down. It's crushing me. Nobody else knows. People think I'm a fun guy. People think I'm just a, 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 a good guy. But it's crushing me. And I can't carry it anymore. The people, when they look at me, they think I'm this, but I'm really, this is what I'm struggling with. This is what I'm, I want to lay it at your feet right now because I can't carry this baggage anymore. I know God, you see it, you understand it, you understand my struggles, but this day I want to take this opportunity at this amnesty altar to let it go, to lay it down. Why not burden God? with what's burdening you. Why not burden God with what's burdening you? In a moment, I'm going to invite you to come forward. In this place, we're not going to go, so what's your problem? What's your thing? No, no, no. God knows all of that. This is just where we're going to dump it. By moving forward and saying, God, I acknowledge I got baggage. I'm going to dump it right here. This is it. I'm tired of carrying it. I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm not going to carry it anymore. I'd invite you if you need to respond. And I know there'll be ones who do need to respond. So right now, just as the musicians play, just to come from, get out of your seat now. Come on. If you know there's stuff to get rid of, if you know that there's Stuff that you need to lay down. Stuff in your life that you go, man, I need to get rid of that. Why not come? Why not come? And then as you do that, we will pray. So I just invite you just now, wherever you are. Maybe the singers can come and just sing quietly. And you're going, man, that's me, Pastor. That's me. I, I, I need. I need to get right with you today. I need to get rid of this stuff. This baggage in my life. Would you come? Come. I invite you to come.